there are planets in the universe that drift alone. No orbit, no sun, no light, just darkness and silence. They're called rogue planets, and they are not rare. Some were born in chaos, ejected from their systems by violent gravitational shifts. Others may have never known a sun at all, forged in the void, drifting since the dawn of time. They float freely through interstellar space, cold, forgotten, invisible. And the most terrifying part? Some of them may be heading toward us, right now. Unseen, undetected, just waiting. Beyond the stars lies the cosmic unknown, where nothing is ever truly silent. Most planets follow rules. They orbit stars, bask in light, dance in predictable paths. But rogue planets reject that order. They roam, unafraid, untethered. Astronomers once believed they were cosmic curiosities. Now, surveys hint they may be legion. Perhaps two, three, even four rogue planets for every star in the Milky Way. If true, the galaxy is less an orderly clockwork and more a dark ocean thick with drifting stones. Yet we barely know they exist. Why? Because they emit no light. They reflect almost nothing. Their night side is eternal. Only when luck wedges them between us and a distant sun does their gravity betray them. This fleeting signature is called gravitational microlensing. Starlight bends around the planet, brightening for minutes, sometimes seconds, before fading back to black. One blink, and the wanderer is gone. The upcoming Roman Space Telescope will stare at the crowded heart of the galaxy, hoping to catch thousands of these blinks and map the rogue population the way sailors once charted hidden reefs. But rogues are more than statistics. They are worlds with histories. Some began as gas giants, bloated and young, until a passing star ripped them away. Their thick atmospheres may have boiled off, leaving frozen cores sheathed in storms of metallic snow. Others resemble Earth, crust fractured, oceans flash frozen, while continents cracked like glass. Inside, radioactive elements still simmer, heating hidden seas tens of kilometers below black ice. There, darkness is not emptiness, but habitat. Could life take root in such abyssal cradles? On Earth, microbes thrive in basaltic veins kilometers beneath our feet, never seeing daylight, feeding on chemical gradients alone. Replace our mantle with a rogue planet's convecting core, and the recipe is the same. Water, heat, time. An ecosystem sealed from the cosmos, evolving in perfect night, could persist for billions of years, long enough to wonder whether stars are myth. But a drifting planet is also a bullet. If a Jupiter-mass rogue plunged through the outer solar system, its gravity could unravel our delicate clockwork. Neptune might be nudged, sending icy comets into cascades. Mars could be ejected entirely. Earth's orbit could stretch into an ellipse that turns summers into searing droughts and winters into global glaciers. Worst case, the intruder would snare us, tearing us from the sun and binding us to its frigid migration. Humanity's last sunrise would be our first glimpse of true cosmic night, and we might never see it coming. We scan the sky for bright intruders, but the enemy here is absence. No glow, no tail, no warning. Only a slow warp of starlight measured after the fact. Imagine standing on the frozen plains of such a world, your suit's visor frosting over, while the only illumination comes from pale auroras fed by cosmic rays. The ground beneath your boots is glassy nitrogen ice, hard as granite. Every footstep rings like a muted bell across an atmosphere so thin it barely remembers pressure. Overhead, the sky is a cathedral of stars, sharper than any night on Earth, because nothing here scatters their light. Yet deeper down, rivers of liquid water may snake above a churning core. Metallic hydrogen currents could forge magnetic fields strong enough to carve tunnels in the solar wind. If you dropped a seismometer, 
you might hear tides raised not by a moon, but by passing nebulae, whole clouds of molecular hydrogen tugging at the planet's crust as it drifts by. Where do these wanderers come from? Two young stars orbiting in a binary can tear at each other's planets, slinging them outward like stones from a cosmic sling. In crowded stellar nurseries, newborn giants jostle for space, and the smallest losers are booted into the dark. Even the violent death of a sun, a supernova, can kick its surviving worlds across the galaxy at thousands of kilometers per second. Some flee the Milky Way altogether, shot into intergalactic emptiness. Others bide their time in the halo, silent snowballs on thousand million year circuits. A few are captured again. A star sweeps past, its gravity latches on, and a rogue becomes a satellite once more. Astronomers suspect some of the hot Jupiters we observe, broiling beside their stars, were once exiles brought home by chance. Detection will soon sharpen. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory will take a photograph of the entire southern sky every few nights. Its software will sift through trillions of pixels, looking for faint points that drift against the fixed tapestry of galaxies. Each slow pixel could be a rogue or something worse. Fear is a powerful fundraiser in science, and the prospect of an unseen giant is motivating better eyes. But even if we map them all, we are still vulnerable. Space is not empty. It is a billiard table with too many balls and too few rules. Over cosmic time scales, orbits are suggestions, not laws. Chaos wins. Perhaps one day, humanity will leave the sun willingly, boarding generation craft that ride alongside a captured rogue, using its mass as shield and resource. We could burrow into the crust, carving habitats warmed by geothermal heat, turning the planet into a mobile citadel that drifts between the stars long after Sewell has expanded and died. In that future, children might learn about daylight as legend, a dangerous radiation that ancient people once bathed in. And if we never meet such exiles, then every rogue planet remains a message in a bottle we have yet to read. Their surfaces record collisions, cosmic ray scars, and the slow accumulation of frozen gases. Their interiors archive the chemistry of forgotten nebulae. Each one is a museum without lights, locked but not unopenable. In the end, rogue planets remind us that isolation is relative. We imagine ourselves connected because we orbit a star, but connection built on light is fragile. Pull the plug, and all the networks fail. What remains is heat, gravity, and the stories we manage to tell in the dark. So tonight, look up. Remember that between those tiny points of fire drift worlds older than memory, colder than regret, darker than fear. They do not glow, but they exist, and existence is enough to change fate. And if ever, in some distant century, Earth's sky dims for a heartbeat longer than usual, spare a thought for the shadow that caused it, a wanderer passing through, indifferent to our fragile story, carrying its own silent saga etched in ice because the universe is full of ghosts that never learn to stop. They do not need permission. They move, they wait, they endure. Not lost, just waiting.